Hare Krishna, Mahamantra Ki Jai. In a couple of days, I think it's Wednesday, there is a yearly festival that is celebrated all over the ISKCON world, which originated in the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's called Panihati. And there is a whole chapter in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Anjalila chapter 6, describing in detail the, act, the activities of this particular pastime. So I'll try, and with whatever limited time we have, to somehow give some of the essential points of this particular pastime. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Rinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Rinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gurvata Rinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gurvata Rinda Oh, we'll read a little bit about this pastime. It centers around Raghunath Das Goswami. And those of you who have some background know that Raghunath Das Goswami was one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. He was one of the most renounced of all of the Goswamis. Uh, Renunciation is an interesting topic, and I heard Prabhupada was speaking about it just the other day, that renunciation, well, before we start, Omagyan timirandasya gena jana salakaya chaksu un militam yena tasmai shri gurubhena maha nama om vishnu vadaya krishna prestaya bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirishesha Sunyavadi Asyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Thruvishya Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Vititanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Ghor Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Raghunath Das Goswami had all the opulences that one could ever imagine. He uh, was the son, only son, of a wealthy landowner, Zamindar who was employed by the government to collect taxes and would keep a per percentage of those taxes for his own income. Raghunath Das Goswami's father and his uncle were compared to nowadays people who are billionaires. <laughs> That's how much wealth they had. And Raghunath was the only son. <laughs> So he was heir to all of that fortune, but he wasn't interested. <laughs> he uh, heard about, then saw, but didn't associate with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but became very much inspired by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he made it his determined effort 
to join Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's entourage and become one of his servants. But his parents, obviously quite wealthy, they're the only son, were not in favor of that. And it's going on today too, parents sometimes, many times, try to restrict their children from, um, you know, going to Krishna consciousness. I was just talking to someone yesterday, I won't mention her name, but she said, my father is Kamsadas. <laughs> she called him Kamsadas. <laughs> I was thinking, hmm, interesting. <laughs> nice way to refer to your father. <laughs> but she was, she repeated it many times, so obviously she was fixed on that one. <laughs> and uh, so even, even today we see how parents are somewhat restrictive or even against their children becoming Hare Krishnas. <laughs> but here we see the situation was now, Raghunath Das Goswami had all the opulence that could possible. And he had a wife that has mentioned that she was like an angel. She had all good qualities, bodily beauty, beauty chastity, uh, dedication to serving her husband. Everything that a man could want in a wife was there and more wasn't interested. <laughs> Wealth, family, heritage, culture, beautiful wife, everything needed. Many personal servants that were ready to serve him anytime he needed it, not interested. <laughs> That's renunciation. <laughs> Prabhupada said, if you don't have anything and you think you're renounced, <laughs> it's not <laughs> renunciation. When you actually have something and then you give it up, that's renunciation. And so Raghunath Das Goswami was always trying at the chagrin of his parents to go to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he could never escape. Finally, he found one opportunity and he tricked his guards, because they used to keep 11 guards around him all the time so to make sure, because he used to run away, they would bring him back. So they would always increase the guards every time he run and ran away. So on the plea of uh, wanting to talk to the head pujari, Balaram, and uh, there was some discrepancy in the worship in the Didi, the Didi family Didi, he somehow or other tricked the guards and he got away. Now he was determined to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and joined me to Mahaprabhu, because Mahaprabhu knew about him, but Mahaprabhu sent the word that he should stay there. When the time was ready, Krishna would cut him loose from his attachments. So it seemed like the time had come. And now he was on his way. But when he was on his way, he happened to come across a gathering, a small gathering of Lord Nityananda and some of his disciples. Realizing this was Sri Nityananda, the very intimate associate, and of course, what you might say, Lord Balaram himself, he uh, saw Lord Nityananda from a distance. And I'll see if I can uh, find that place. And uh, he said, sitting on the rock under the tree on the bank of the Ganges, Lord Nityananda seemed as effulgence as hundreds and thousands of rising suns. Many devotees sat on the ground surrounding him. Seeing the influence of Nityananda, Raghunath Das became astonished. Jai Sisi Gornitai Ki Jai. Raghunath Das offered his obeisances by falling prostrate at a distant place. And the servant of Nityananda Prabhu pointed out, there is Raghunath offering obeisances from a distance. Hearing this, Lord Nityananda said, you are a thief. <laughs> nice way to get greeted <laughs> after you pay obeisances. You are a thief. Now you have to come and see me. Come here, come here. Today I shall punish you. Whoa. Coming from Lord Nityananda. The Lord called out, but Raghunath Das did not go near the Lord. Then the Lord came and forcibly caught him and placed his lotus feet on Raghunath Das's head. Wow, that's pretty good, huh? That's called mercy personified. 
Lord Nityananda by nature is very merciful and very funny. <laughs> Being merciful, he spoke to Raghunath Daska, you are just like a thief, for instead of coming near, you stay at a distant place. Now I have captured you. I shall punish you. Hmm. Make a festival and feed all my associates yogurt and chip rice. Hearing this, Raghunath Das was greatly pleased. Raghunath immediately sent his own men to the village to purchase all kinds of edibles and bring them back. Raghunath Das bought chip rice, yogurt, sweet meat, sugar, bananas, and other edibles and placed them all around. As soon as the word got out, a festival was being held. All kinds of brahmanas and gentlemen arrived from everywhere. Thus, there were innumerable people. Seeing the crowd, Raghunath Das arranged to get more edibles from the village. He brought two or four large round earthen pots, obtained five or seven especially large earthen pots. And in these pots, a Brahmin began soaking chip rice for the satisfaction of Lord Nityananda. In one place, chip rice was soaked in hot milk with each in, with, in each of large pots. Then half the rice was mixed with yogurt, sugar, and bananas. The other half was mixed with condensed milk and a special type of banana known as chanpa kala. Then sugar and ghee and camphor were added. After Nityananda had changed his cloth for a new one, sat on the platform, the Brahmins brought him seven huge pots. On that platform, almost all the associates of Lord Nityananda, as well as all the important men, sat around in a circle. Ramdas, Sunandana, Sudardana, Su, Sudarnanda, Gadadhar, Marari, Kamalakara, Sadasivan, Purandaram, Dhananjaya, the Jagadish, Parmeswar, Mahesh Gauri, Das, Hoda Krishna. All of them were all there. And there were all many other personalities of Lord Nityananda there. Many scarlet Brahmins, priests came, and Lord Nityananda honored them and made them sit down. Everyone was offered two earthen pots. And one was put chip rice with condensed milk and the other chip rice with yogurt. No one could count the amount of people that were there. In fact, they were on the banks of the Ganges and there were so many people that there was no room. You might see there was a painting that was done for this particular part of the... F and you'll see that people were standing in the Ganga up to their waist holding two pots, one with chip rice, yogurt and bananas, the other with chip rice, ghee, and uh, sugar, camphor, like that. So a big festa was there. And then everyone started to, on the queue of Lord Nityananda, take prasadam. And Lord Nityananda became so animated, he became so happy, he was eating chip rice, everybody was enjoying like crazy. Then, guess what happened? Guess who came? You didn't see him, but he was there. Lord Chaitanya. He appeared, and he thought, Oh, my devotees are having a nice festival. I'm glad I came. And then Lord Nityananda, and only a few of the most confidential associates could actually see Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Nityananda was going around to everybody's pot and taking a little bit of the chip rice, and he was placing it like this, and everybody's saying, what is he doing? But what he was doing, he was feeding Lord Chaitanya. And no one could see, maybe one or two could see, only those who were very elevated could see. And he was feeding, he, Lord Chaitanya was eating a little bit of chip rice from all the different pots. And goes on. And Lord Nityananda said, and then of course Raghava Pandit came. Raghava Pandit is another personality. He's famous for his cooking. There's a, there's a whole section called Raghava Jollies. Jollies means bags. He used to make wonderful, wonderful preparations for Lord Nityananda and put it in these bags. And then him and his sister, Damayanti, they would distribute it to Lord Chaitanya. One time Lord Chaitanya was sitting in his room in the Gambira. This was toward the end of his leela. And uh, Govinda, his servant, was there. And Govinda said, uh, My Lord, you know, all the devotees, including Raghava Pandit and 
Damianti, they've been cooking for you for the last month. And they've been giving me all of these preparations for you. But every time I give it to you, you say, put it away. Now the whole room is full. <laughs> and the devotees are asking me, how did the Lord like my preparation? And I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya said, why don't let your mind bother you? Just bring it, bring it, bring it. So he rang and he ate everything in the whole room in one place. Because <laughs> he's called Vishwambar. Vishwambar means one who can eat everything in the universe. He, Vishwambar means one who nourishes the universe, but he can also become the supreme personality of Godhead in all his opulence. And to him, to eat a full room full of prasadam is like, you know, it's just like taking a, you know, a, a snack. <laughs> It was nothing. <laughs> so he came and he said, My dear Lord Dityananda, I have offered some food to my deity. Please come. And I want you to all take this prasadam. Lord Dityananda replied, Let me eat all of this food here during the day, and at night I shall come to your place. Mm -hmm. I belong to a cowherd community of boys. I belong to a community of cowherd boys. <laughs> And therefore, I generally have many cowherd associates with me. I'm happy, and we eat together and picnic like this on the sandy beach of the river. And Lord Nityananda made Raghavapanda sit down and gave him two pots also of chipped rice. When the chipped rice was, was uh, served to everyone, Lord and then, of course, then Lord Nityananda brought Lord Chaitanya and started distributing their rice like that. Then, after some time, Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya actually appeared in person, everyone can see him. And then Lord Nityananda offered Chaitanya Mahaprabhu a place to sit, and then the two brothers began eating chip rice together. Seeing Lord Chaitanya eating with him, Lord Nityananda Prabhu became very happy and exhibited many symptoms of ecstatic love. Lord Nityananda ordered, all of you eat! Chant the holy name Hari. Immediately the holy names Hari, Hari resounded, filling the entire universe. When all the Vaishnavas were chanting the holy name, Hari, 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 Hari. And eating, they remembered how Krishna and Balaram ate with their companions, the Kalhar Bank boys, on the banks of the Jamuna River. And so this festival went on, and all the devotees had a wonderful. Then the, the shopkeepers from many villages heard about the festival, and they came arriving and wanted to sell chip rice, yogurt, and sweet mates and bananas. They came to make money. <laughs> all of them came bringing all kinds of food. Raghunath Das purchased everything. Then they, he gave them price for the goods, and after he gave them their price for the goods, he sat all the shopkeepers down and fed them chip rice and bananas and many other nice things. Anyone who came to see these funny things were going on, it's kind of humorous when you actually see it, they were also fed chip rice, bananas, and yogurt. And Lord Nityananda finished it, he washed his hands, and he gave Raghunath Das the food remaining in his four pots. And then there were so much food remaining. Then a brahmana brought a flower gall and placed it around the, the neck of Lord Nityananda and smeared sandalwood pulp all over his body. Then they brought betel nut. The Lord smiled and chewed his betel nut. Do you, you ever you see a betel nut smile? Those of you who have been to India, yes? No? A betel nut smile? Yeah, it's very... Interesting. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It looks like something you've never seen before. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's either red, dark red, or something else. <laughs> it's, so the sort, they brought betel nut, and then they distributed it to all the devotees, and then all of that was distributed as prasadam. And Lord Nityananda and Raghunath Das became very happy. <laughs> And then he distributed everything to all the devotees there. 
This is a wonderful festival. Nityananda rested for the rest of the day and then went to the temple of Raghava Pandit, and of course he later on ordered that. And of course after that, uh, Raghunath Das, so he brought gold coins with him that he had with him, and he gave every devotee who came a donation of gold coins. So not only did he feed everyone, paid for everything, organized the festival, and he remunerated all the devotees with wealth. This is a beautiful festival. I've been, we performed this festival here, yes, many years ago. I think with Jai Pataka Maharaj. Yeah, he did it here. I was here, I think. Do you remember um, uh, Seva Kunj? Jai Pataka Maharaj didn't come here and do this festival? Hmm. Okay, I know he did it in Italy. In, in Villa Vrindavan, and no, it was in Prabhupada Desh, and of course, in Atlanta, Georgia, there's a temple called Nupanihati. So, uh, Jai Pataka Maharaj would go every year, mostly every year, to that place, and he would perform the whole. Thing. He would go in the kitchen about, you know, right after Mangalarti, and he would cook, and then we'd make all these different pots of chip rice, and then there would be six preparations, some, one sweet, one sour, one salty, one pungent, one bitter, and one, uh, what did I leave out? One more. Sweet, sour, pungent, bitter, and... Uh, chili. Oh, hmm? chili. Chili, spicy, okay. And then we would put it all on the altar in front of the deities, and we'd offer it, and then we take it off, and Jai Pataka Maharaj would do an auction. <laughs> and we would auction off the pots. And so, how many would, can you give 100 euros? 100 dollars? Yes, 200? Yeah. Okay. How about this pot? This is a, this is a special one. And Maharaj would be conducting the, the whole uh, yeah, auction. 200? Come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> And sometimes it'd go up to, I was, I was, when I was in uh, Italy, we got, somebody bid 600 euros for one pot. <laughs> I was there thinking, well, I got some Lakshmi, but that's a little bit out of my range. <laughs> and then we would distribute it, and then our devotees would have their pots, and that, that way they'd give a large donation to the temple, and the temple would make some good money. And then that way it would help the, the temple funds a lot. And then we'd have a huge feast afterwards, huge, I mean, Memi was just like huge. Mostly Jai Pataka Maharaj cooked most of it and when he would organize the rest of the devotees. So this is a very, very wonderful festival the devotees do every year. And I actually did it in India one year in the spot of where Panihati actually took place. We also did it there with many of the devotees. We had about two or three hundred devotees, and we performed this festival right near the house of Raghava Pandit. So it's a beautiful, beautiful festival. There's a very in in interesting point made in this festival that we should all understand very clearly. Raghunath Das Goswami was on his way to join Lord Chaitanya, but he didn't make it. He made it to Lord Nityananda. And then Lord Nityananda engaged him in service. This is interesting because it's a very foundational principle of Krishna consciousness. He wanted to go to the Lord, but who is Lord Nityananda? He is the original supreme spiritual master. He is Guru Tattva. Before you can approach the Lord, you have to approach the Lord in his representative, the spiritual master. And then, because that's why, that's why uh, Lord Nityananda said, you're a thief. <laughs> you're trying to go to God without going through Guru. <laughs> you have to go to Guru, then you can go to God. And then what does Guru do? He engages you in seva. And when seva becomes pleasing, Raghunath Das Goswami pleased Lord Nityananda, the original spiritual master, and all of the devotees. When that happens, then he got the full blessings of Lord Nityananda, 
And he was able, right after that, to join the entourage of Lord Chaitanya. So we see this is how this, is how this applies to us in our Krishna consciousness. Don't try to approach the Lord directly. Sometimes we think, well, of course we have a direct relationship with the Lord, but that relationship has been covered by the material energy. And being encased in the material energy, we have to break through that casing through the principle of mercy. And there's where the guru comes in. He gives that mercy in the form of engagement in devotional service. So without that devotional service, or without that attitude to serve the spiritual master, who's the representative of the Lord, and the Vaishnavas, because that's also important there. One who thinks, well, I can just serve the guru, and that's enough. No. You'll never get the blessings of the Lord if you simply serve guru. You have to serve the Vaishnavas, too. Serving the Vaishnavas ser means serving the Lord in a way that is very pleasing to the Lord, because the Vaishnavas are very dear to the Lord. So those who really want to understand the deep principles of devotional service must make it a conscious effort to serve their spiritual master by, by serving the devotees. How to serve the devotees means you have to think of ways on how to serve the devotees. If we think, well, if I get the opportunity, that's nice. If I don't, then it's also no, no. And that's not going to work. It doesn't work. You've got to be proactive. <laughs> you have to think, how can I, s let me think of ways to serve the devotees. And as Prabhupada used to teach us, the more you serve the devotee of the devotee of the devotee of the devotee of the devotee, and he said 100 times down the line, the farther down the line you are, the more you are dear to the Lord. There's those who want to go directly to the Lord. The Lord's not interested in that. Unless they have already gone through that mood of Vaishnav Seva. When Lord Chaitanya was performing his Mahaprakash Leela, 21 hours giving benedictions to the devotees, after the devotees had given him a beautiful bath, of various kinds of substances, right in the home of Srivas Thakur. The Lord noticed one elderly lady, she was standing in the Ganges, and she was filling the pots that were given to the devotees, like they made a line from the Ganges all the way to Lord Chaitanya, and they were passing the pots, and then when the per and it was Advaita and Nityananda who were bathing. Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya saw that lady in the Ganga and he said, he turned to Srivas, he said, who is that? Srivas said, well, that's my servant. Her name is Duki. Oh, Duki. We should now give her the name Suki. Suki means happy. <laughs> Duki means miserable. <laughs> So now she became blessed. Whether she liked it or not, she became happy. <laughs> she liked it, <laughs> obviously. So that was the Lord. He could do that. He could just simply look at you and give you love of God. And all of a sudden you're in ecstasy, you're rolling on the ground, you don't know what happened. <laughs> that was Lord Chaitanya. He was so merciful. But when he, when he saw someone serving the devotees in a nice way, the Lord was especially merciful like that. And that's how he trained his devotees. Every devotee that followed Lord Chaitanya were always serving the other devotees. Of course, they were always interested in being with Lord Chaitanya, but they were always actively serving each other. Now, this is Krishna consciousness. And that's how, that's how things expand. Sometimes we think, how do we expand this movement? That's the secret. The more we serve the devotees, of course, we have to serve in the way that is done, that the devotees become pleased and Krishna consciousness pushes on. It's not that we can just, you know, well, you know, I gave, well, giving prasadam to the devotees is one of the ways to serve the devotees. 
giving gifts to the devotees is one of the ways to serve the devotees. Speaking confidential subject matters to the devotees or just developing friendship with the devotee is a way to serve the devotees. And that devotee seva is really the highest form of bhakti. Lord Chaitanya taught that and exhibited it himself. He came, Lord Nityananda, he was serving all the devotees by engaging Raghunath Das Goswami in service of the devotees. Even Nityananda was serving everyone. The Lord likes to serve his devotees more than the devotees like to serve the Lord. That's the nature of the Lord. He is in that mood of service and his devotees are very dear to him. And that means every devotee, every devotee is dear to the Lord. Why? Because they're a devotee. <laughs> That's, that is the mood. And so Lord Chaitanya taught that. There's one particular uh, story. It's in the Christian tradition, but it's, it's called a archetype. You know what the word archetype means? It's a typical type of principle that is being taught through this particular activity. So I'll tell it. It happened in Europe. At least the story is given in that way, where there were a very flourishing Christian monastery. I mean, it was one of the best monasteries in all of Europe. And people were coming. And they were, they had so much to offer to people. And the monastery was growing nicely. But somehow, doesn't say how, somehow things changed. And then people stopped coming, and many of the brothers in the monastery started to leave. And after a few years, there was only six brothers left in the monastery, and the monastery was hardly being visited by anyone. Everything went down. So, some of the brothers who were there were wondering, what can we do to, again, you know, bring that mood of devotion back. So they went to the abbot, the head of the monastery, and they explained their situation. The abbot said, you know, uh, I can't give you an answer, but I heard there is one of the most principal and revered rabbis in Jewish tradition. He is traveling through this area. I will meet him and I will ask him. I'm sure he can give us some help. So he made that arrangement. He met the rabbi. So they were speaking, and he explained the whole situation. The rabbi thought about it for a minute, and he said, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but I can tell you one thing for sure. He was certain. One of your six brothers in that monastery is the chosen one by the Lord. He is the Messiah. He is, the, he is the person that is chosen by the Lord. So the abbot said, well, which one? He said, I don't know, but I know one of them is there. Okay, so they exchanged very friendly greetings. The abbot went back, and now the brothers were eager to hear what the abbot, what the rabbi said. So they sat around, and then he explained, he said, well, you know, he didn't give any real solution, but he did say one thing. He said, one of you six is the Messiah. <laughs> in other words, you have, one of you six are the chosen one by God. Which one? Didn't say. So they started looking at each other, <laughs> not knowing which one was which. And then the whole mood changed, and they were starting to see. Well, Brother John, you know, he gets angry, but he's always right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Brother Luke, well, he, uh, he sleeps a lot, but he works hard. <laughs> so they start, start seeing all the good qualities in the, uh, each, each of the devotees. And then gradually, starting to appreciate him and not knowing which one was, they start serving each other really nicely, not knowing which one was which. <laughs> And then gradually the things changed, and then uh, people started to come again. 
And the monastery started to develop, more brothers started to join, and again the monastery started to flourish. <laughs> so the point is, and this is a very important point that we to understand, it's foundational, that Vaishnav Seva, and this is Lord Chaitanya had taught this as one of the main principles, serving the Vaishnavas. Serving Vaishnavas, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and serving those who we want to become Vaishnavas, Jiva Doi, in other words, preaching Krishna consciousness. Lord Chaitanya made these three principles his main focus. Chant Hare Krishna and develop a taste for chanting. Serve the Vaishnavas and preach Krishna consciousness. These are the three principles Lord Chaitanya focused on in expanding his movement all over the world, which are the principles that we adhere to today. So, uh, so you can see from this festival, this Panihati festival, the cover of this particular volume of Chaitanya Charitamrita has a beautiful picture of all the devotees sitting around Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And uh, they're all there, and half of them are in the water, and half of them are on the land, all uh, enjoying this wonderful festival of Panihati, and this beautiful festival. I remember I was, I used to be a cook, used to be, <laughs> and I, would, I was a cook, and we had a brahmachari ashram in Nuvrindavan. It was just brahmacharis. And I, I was there. We were in the mountains all by ourselves. <laughs> we had three farms. We had, a, we had a Grihasta farm. We had a farm with mixed devotees, and we had one Brahmachari ashram. So I was there for many years, and I was the cook, and the Panihati came up, and they said, let's do the festival. <laughs> so I had to make the whole Panihati festival. <laughs> we got the chip rice. I don't know how we got it, but we got it. And then we, we made the, I boiled two pots of big milk, soaked some chip rice with bananas and sugar in one and the other one, ghee, camphor, and chip rice in the other one. And we had a big, that was my first experience with this real wonderful festival. And since then I've seen Jai Pataka Maharaj do it at least three times, twice in Panihati in Atlanta, once in Italy. I thought he did it here, maybe I was mistaken. Maybe I just wish he would have did it here. <laughs> but it's a beautiful festival. We have a lot to learn from this festival. And then Raghunath Das Goswami, whose strong desire was to be an associate of Lord Chaitanya, he got that simply by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Guru's mercy is Krishna's mercy. Guru's mercy is Krishna's mercy. If you want Krishna's mercy, you have to get Guru's mercy. If you get Guru's mercy, you get Krishna's mercy. The combined mercy is the complete mercy. And then your, the path of devotional service is wide open. But, Vaishnav Seva and chanting the holy names of the Lord, and whenever we get a chance, preach Krishna consciousness. That should be our, our focus. And then this movement will have no problems. If these three things are our focus, maintaining temples are not so hard because Krishna is the one who maintains the temple, not us. We were just his custodians. The temple belongs to everybody. It's not our temple. We manage it, we, we keep it going, but it's Krishna who keeps it going. And when Krishna sees that devotees are you know, developing this mood of service to the Vaishnavas and to the people in general and spreading the holy name, you know, you won't be able to fit anybody in this, in, anymore. You'll have no room for people anymore. It'll be too crowded. <laughs> people will be coming because Krishna sends them. He'll send more and more devotees. Uh, I think sometimes we're afraid of that. Oh no, what are we going to do? <laughs> there goes my comfort zone. <laughs> We get a little afraid of success. <laughs> that could be like that, right? <laughs> but that's not the, that's not Vaishnava. Vaishnava likes to see, and then have more and more temples all over the the country. Prabhupada said every village, every t t town, every city should have a temple, at least one temple, where devotees can come and worship and practice Krishna consciousness like that. 
So these are some of the, the wonderful pastimes. This, if you get a chance, the actual anniversary for the pastime is Wednesday, and it's chapter six of Anchilila. You can read the whole pastime. I just read uh, most of it, but not all of it. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of time here. We have about 10 minutes before the RT. Any questions or comments? Yes, Matala? Matko. Matko, okay. This might seem like a banal question, but it occurred to me today. Okay. Chip rice. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, you never seen chip rice. Yeah, I've never seen chip rice. Okay, it's another name for it is called flat rice. Yeah, I think uh, some devotees who've been to India they know all what chip rice is, right? Flat rice, right? Chita, chita, right? Right? Chita, chita, chita dahi, chita, and dahi means yogurt. <laughs> Chiradahi. It's flat rice, chipped rice. And it's very nice. <laughs> but if you eat it the way it is, it's not so nice. <laughs> you have to soak it in some kind of yogurt or milk or something like that. Condensed milk also. Okay. Anything else? Any other comments, questions? Yes, oh, we got two hands up. Okay, we got um, um, Matsya and we got uh, Mataji. <laughs> yeah, Matsya. Okay, we're going to. Yeah. Yesterday, I I met uh, my old friend in Vieka in Ratayata. We talk about many things, but we say the most important. We have group because we we, we are uh, old. Uh, my, my friend is all, also old. We have many problems like uh, pain uh, in the uh, leg <laughs> and so and so many problems. And uh, the conclusion, my conclusion was. The most important thing is that that we are happy, Suki. We are Suki. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Suki. Yeah. Happy yeah. means chant Hare Krishna. Happy means taking Krishna Prasadam. Happy means dancing. Yes. Happy means serving the devotees. When you serve the devotees, the devotees become happy by your service. Yes. You become happy automatically when you make the devotees happy. That's the way to become happy, is make other people happy. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. this is good. Make other people happy. Yeah. Try to figure out how to make people happy. I know how to make, uh, what's his name? Um, mm -hmm. oh, I'm really good with names tonight. <laughs> uh, what's his name? He's here. He's in the kitchen. Gormitra. All I do is tell jokes, and he's so happy. You know, I just think when I see Gormitra, I have to come up with more jokes, you know. <laughs> and he just laughs like, you know, like Madhu Mangal, you know. <laughs> so, you know, we have to figure out how to make the devotees happy. <laughs> Sometimes that looks a little mundane, but, but Lord Chaitanya used to tell jokes all the time. So <laughs> okay, uh, yes, Matsya. Prabhu. I find it interesting that the Lord is chanting Hari. Hari, Hari. I'm not trying to raise any controversy. I know there, there used to be. Personally, I don't, I don't see any. But it's just interesting that the Lord is chanting Hari, Hari. Well, today, any festival will chant Hari Krishna. Yeah. Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. Hari 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 It's not that obvious. That's nice when you say Hari Krishna, that's nice when you say Hari Hari. 
<laughs> it's even, it's got some juice to it. <laughs> and you know, Hari, you know, you know what it means also, it means one who takes away everything. <laughs> That's another name for Hari. That means if you're saying Hari, Hari, keep saying it, and you're not going to have anything left. But anyway, <laughs> that was my trick. <laughs> Now nobody will chant it. <laughs> so Hari Hari means, means also means thief. <laughs> Krishna is known as the thief. He's called Hari. Takes away everything that, that you don't need and gives you everything you need. <laughs> okay. But... Yeah, that's the, what that's what they were doing. Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Hari. Yeah, see, it's nice. Go home and there's no nothing. Every, your, everything in your house is gone. <laughs> the house too is gone too. <laughs> Some <laughs> Hari Hari. <laughs> So yeah, whatever we have in this world, it's going to be gone anyway, so you might as well use it or give it away. <laughs> Somehow you, you can't keep nothing in this world. The only thing you can keep is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. That we can keep. Just like yesterday, we had a wonderful Rathi It was so nice. It was so much spiritual energy. How many of you are here now that were there at the Rathi Yatra today, yesterday? That was a good number. At least almost half, yeah. It was such a powerful program. And all we did was chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so we didn't. And Jagannath was there. But when all the devotees come together and, and glorify the Lord by chanting and dancing... It's the Mahotsava. It's the Maha Mahotsava. It gives great happiness. We see the devotees. We dance. We chant. We distribute a prasadam. That's spiritual. <laughs> so yeah, this is in the summertime. We can do more and more of that too. Okay, so we'll stop here and thank you very much. Shri Pani Hatti Dham Ki Jai, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki, Shri Nityananda Ram Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Gaur Primanande.